I'm not sure how much more I can say in eight minutes. Um, well, let me just at least say that, and then I'll just show you a screen of it. Um, we're trying to exploit what we know the curriculum already has. Um, and we're, we're sticking with this funny metaphor of timing patterns. It seems if you look at our, our, our curriculum, these timing patterns really are the way that we, we're expecting kids to make this jump to generalization. So we're trying to do two things. One is to, to build a micro world. And you'd be surprised. As soon as you say, we have a different technology to express this, you can get to some really interesting. Here, let me give you an example. I don't want any of this detail, I'm sorry, it's just much too much. Oh, I haven't now, but I need to show you. Um, and I have to stop in seven minutes. I'm going to just try and, and run the software if I possibly can. Okay. Yeah, so here's a, a really simple, please ignore all this stuff here. Here's a really simple pattern. These kids are quite young. We just You can all see that it's just three times the number of L shapes, can't you? And so you could write a little equation, I don't know, N maps to 3N or something. I'm deliberately taking a really simple example. But here's, a, here's the simplest thing I can think of in which the technology completely changes such a simple thing. If you say to kids, as our textbooks do, Look at this pattern. How many blue tiles are there for four L shapes? Kids say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. What would you have to do to stop them counting? We're desperate to stop them counting. Because once they're counting, they can't possibly be thinking about the general case. What could you possibly do to, to try to discourage them from counting? Do not count. <laughs> oh, well, that, you see, that's the difference between Hong Kong and England. You tell English kids what to do, they do the opposite. Yeah, yeah. No, but, but no, I'm sure some of you have, uh, have thought of an answer, and by the way, my answer might not be unique, but here's a really simple thing you can do. You make sure that when you give them the problem, it's moving. It's moving around the screen, it's changing its length. And then you say, how many blue squares are there? And they can't count. Because it's... Yes. Oh, I'm trying to keep it still, and you say, no, I'm just not. Yeah. And so, what could you do in that situation? I'm, I'm frightened to touch the system, it's so fragile at the moment, but, but you just have to imagine that this pattern's moving and a different number of L shapes. And what could you do? The only thing you can do is you can say, well, I don't know. There seem to be like three in each blob, and so it's, there are three times the number of blobs that and, and it's kind of encouraging you to think about the general case. So it's a really, I can hardly think of a simpler example. The dynamic technology, the fact that technology is moving, is changes completely the relationship between the learner and the task. Please don't think that this, we have a three year project with one and a half million pounds just so that we can have moving L shapes on the screen. But it's now 27 minutes past 12, and I know that I'm going to get told off in a, in a couple of minutes, and I just going to stop it. Um, anyway, that's the other thing um, that is now, you, you can just get a kind of um, idea of, of what I'm talking about, maybe just by looking at the, at the screen in front of you. But I just want to say one other thing about it, and then I'll stop, which is that we, like many other people, are desperate Oh, look, there's a moving pan. We're desperate to try to get kids to talk to each other about knowledge. Um, I know either uh, um, Nancy has a project called Knowledge Building or Knowledge Something. Knowledge, yeah. I know 
There's, there's uh, uh, other projects, there's a project in Canada called Knowledge Forum. Ours is no exception, but it's not exceptional. Uh, it, we, we try to develop situations where it just makes sense to try to enhance what you saw in that video of the very little kids, which is creating a situation where it is natural for the kids to talk about what they're doing with each other. Now, of course, now we have something that we didn't have 10 years ago, which is it's just so much easier to get kids to be talking across time and space. They don't have to even talk synchronously. And we have a situation here um, where we, we have a collaborative area of our system where kids can not only talk about what they've done, but they can show working models of what they've done. So I could, I, I just haven't got time to do it. I could take a working model of what I've done, of some pattern that I've built here, and I could move it onto this interactive area here and say, this is how it works. And somebody else who could be in Hong Kong, if I was in London, says, you know, I look at it a different way from you. I don't look at it as the same number of whites times two plus six. I look at it as white plus two, white plus two, and two extra ones. And then the teacher could say, well, that's really interesting. It's completely your way and your way are completely different ways. Are they the same? What's the same about them? And try to get a discussion which leads to the idea that one expression can be transformed into another expression. I'm going to stop. I just have a confession to make. I started telling you about this at 21 minutes past 12. And originally, when I landed yesterday in Hong Kong, I was going to spend the whole time on it. So I'm sorry if it's all been a bit incoherent, but you have to forgive me. <laughs> so we've got just a few seconds if anybody has something urgent. <coughs> In what you have shown with the simulation is the social science is uh, very impressive. Yeah. Uh, I, I come from Malaysia, so I know what diversity is all about. Yes. People uh, living in areas that people congregate. What I want to say is that maybe there is a, a need to really to help children or even help people to think that simulation is just a simulation. Because uh, basically, as you say, uh, it's so neat that you are so attracted to it that you know, policy makers can actually use that to make some decision based on seven principles? Well, th sorry, three quick things. One is, please understand, this is one model out of hundreds that I could have shown you that have nothing to do with the simulation. Uh, secondly, as I said, it's not my model. Yeah. But um, what I think is important is to try to give people, learners, who are going to become citizens, yeah. enough different lenses through which they can see the world. So, of course, the problem you talk about is a social scientific problem. But it, it helps to notice that there is a mathematical dimension, which is you, you don't have to have somebody orchestrating this for something to go wrong. It just happens by itself. It's almost a mathematical necessity. And by the way, notice how weak the model is. If you're not happy, randomly jump somewhere else. That's not what people do. So that makes it worse, in a way. So I just think this social science needs to open its eyes to the mathematical and scientific dimension, which it has, of course, in many areas of social science. Now, like economics, for example, is just mathematics, um, and not very good mathematics at that. But the other is true as well. Uh, you try, there's a lovely simulation in this piece of software, simulating three-dimensional movement of, of objects just in two dimensions. That's a fantastically interesting phenomenon, which everybody who's ever watched a film with CGI graphics has seen, but has no idea how it's done. So we've got to stop, Anna. Yeah, I think we can stop.